Got the new two and a half inch pro line. Looks sweet. All right. <clears throat> this is my old extension, 10 inch wide, cut a little bit off. After I marry this together, it'll be four feet long altogether. Got two, two bolts on each side on the verticals, and then there was three that I pre-drilled because Keen, for whatever reason, made this box, it's a two and a half inch, made this box 10 and a quarter inches wide, but then instead of flaring it out, they flared it in if you could see that on both sides for whatever reason, I don't, I don't understand. If, if there's enough water flow at 10 inches, then why didn't they just make the box at 10 inches? Whatever is what it is. When I ordered this, I asked them not to notch the back. So they notched it. Uh, but okay, I don't know. They could have put a couple more pop rivets in here. I don't know. So what I think I'm going to do is original plan was to use this box, 10 and a quarter, have a new box folded. But since it came like this and I don't ever use this extension, I figured I would just use this and is what it is. I'm going to take this bracket off. I'm going to put new leg brackets on that should be pretty sturdy. This is a little overboard. Uh, this is thicker than 060. It's like legit eighth inch, but it's, it's pretty stout, but a little heavy. Originally, what I always do is I put on my crash boxes, I put punch plate in here with miner's moss underneath and then whatever matting. So <clears throat> I call it my motivation mat if I stop for an hour, want to see how I'm doing, I can pull the the uh, the punch plate out, pull the miner's moss, give it a quick pan, get motivated or not get motivated and move. But since this is a little different, there's a bunch of pop rivets in here I tried to cut down. There's aluminum weld, which was gobbed like bigger than three eighths. I ground it down a little bit. I think what I'm gonna try and do is do something different to where I have my matting that comes all the way up here and maybe trim it down. And I'm gonna have a separate section that kind of overhangs so I can pull out that first mat and the miner's moss uh, to do a quick see what you see sort of thing. I don't know. I don't know if it's gonna work. I might switch it back. I might change my mind. Don't really know, but I am using the punch plate. This punch plate I got off of Amazon and folded it with Jim's metal brake that I still have that he's probably forgot about again for the next two years. Uh, but this was like 20 bucks on Amazon. I had to get some new miner's moss that I'm gonna cut down. I'm gonna put a handle on it <clears throat> and then I'm kind of jimmy rigging because i didn't want to order some more gold hog matting i have some and between piecing it all together this is from my old one i actually pieced this these sections together i mean it it works is what it is all you kids up in leadville being nervous about oils floating your gold out and making fun of gold hog matting yeah Let's talk about the oils in your foot valve, the oils in miner's moss and your buckets and your gold cubes that lose all your money or all your gold, I guess, but is what it is. So I'm about to marry these guys together. I'm gonna to put silicone. I was gonna put bolts here, but I'm not now. I want this as flat as possible. So I'm just gonna silicone the hell out of it, duct tape the bottom of it, call it good. Oh yeah. These are the brackets I'm gonna put on. I got them off of eBay. They're steel. They're uh, they're they're pretty similar to the Gold Hog ones. 
not as thick, but I got these a while ago. I got a couple of sets of them. They were drilled in four spots and that's a little overkill, I think. So I just drilled in the middle. They're quarter twenties. So I got these guys, uh, I need to cut them down. They don't need to be so long, uh, but they're similar to the gold hog ones and they should be, they, they should work pretty good. But uh, yeah, I'll put this together and not waste time because that's always pretty boring watching people do stupid stuff. All right, here it is set up, kinda. Yes, we have our Christmas tree up already. That's what happens when you have kids. So, I had to steal the leg brackets from the multi-sluice because I forgot to bring the other ones. But you can see how long these uh, quarter 20 handles are. They're just so much nicer for really tightening down. And these brackets, the people that make these, I think they were like 30 bucks on Amazon or eBay. There's another company that makes them. I bought them. They're not good. They work, but they have another hole through here. So like when you're not using your brack, your, your leg bracket, you can throw them through there. They're just not as strong. Uh, these ones are really good, but last I checked, they stopped. Whoever was making them, I guess as a side business, stopped making them, but they work really good. Uh, so yeah, super pumped so far. I need to cut this flap it hangs up on the left side I put one bolt through in the middle down there just because I siliconed this just to help it dry then I'm gonna pull it tape over these holes but then I got to cut some matting oh yeah handle hold on Boom, handle. Yeah, yo. So I'm getting ready to put matting and stuff in here, trying to think of my configuration, but I snagged this. This is one of my extensions I made for my four inch dredge. And I'm over having four foot long, 16 inch wide matting. When you go to clean out and you're slipping on slippery rocks in the river, I'm over it. I'm not going any more than three foot extensions on that. And I don't even need to do that. But there is Razorback, Razorback, Talon, Talon, Small Wave, you are Small Wave, Talon, Talon, 16 inches wide. So I'm gonna gank some of this talon and maybe throw a razor back at the end. So I'm gonna go, this is all gonna be up in there and it's gonna be mother load just to speed it up to a river hog, I'm gonna cut it down. This is gonna be a talon to another river hog cut down just a little bit. And then I'm probably gonna go Talon, Talon, and then Razorback for the very end. That should be sweet. All right, got the matting in. My next video will probably be how many beers it takes to pull apart a bunch of gold hog matting and put it back together in a box. It, it's a pain. You feel like Penguin from Batman Returns when he's putting together all the, uh, the paper and taping it together. It's exactly how you feel. So at the top, I ended up going with, I need to put the bolt through, but this is Yukon. I'm gonna have that up top with uh, some moss and the punch plate that's gonna be bolted down. And then I'll be able to pull that out separately and kind of do a quick cleanup after like an hour, you know, see what you're seeing. And then I went, I ended up going with mother load, uh, river hog, talon, talon, river hog. I'm gonna cut both those river hogs down a, a bit. And then uh, talon, talon. I didn't go with any of the 
the bedrock or whatever that other is called because ended up uh, not having to cut it out. So should work out good. I got the my little fancy uh, knob for the bottom when I bolt in all this stuff. This guy's all dried up. And so I need to put either duct tape around this or a uh, rather grommet because it's a little bit loose, but doing it like this, I've, I've never had issues. I've never had a jam on my three inch or my four inch with the two and a half. It's a little more difficult because you got to cut this. I cut about three eighths of an inch out of this to shorten up the diameter. But when it's all said and done, the inside diameter of this will match up with the inside diameter of this, not necking it down and creating jams. Take note of that, Keen. <laughs> but I don't know why people don't use the old crash boxes more for land-based dredges. They, you don't have to deal with a, a, a jet in the water on shallow streams, shallow rivers when the river goes low, when it's icy. That's why I like these. Uh, so that's what I'm going to use it for. And they work, they work, they work great. Uh, whenever I'm floating dredges, I never use these crash boxes cause they're garbage. But, uh, for, for land-based dredges, you know, it, it sucks fighting two, two hoses on your Venturi nozzle, but you don't have to spend your time making a dam to float your dredge to have that jet underwater. Cause if your jet's not underwater, most of the time you lose a lot of suction. The one thing I'm gonna do is uh, with these feet is either drill a bolt at the bottom that sticks out proud a little bit. So when this is sitting on ice, it doesn't float around, skate around. Either that or I might just uh, cut these pretty sharp so I can rotate them. But then if you ever trip and fall on it, you might die. But all right, well, there it is. Hopefully this video isn't too long and boring. <laughs> One thing I forgot to mention, this is all gonna be bolted down to be able to take out, clean up quickly, right? I'm gonna be taping these holes and filling them with silicone, but this first mat comes to right here. I might make a, a, little, uh, a little transition piece that comes over that this pushes into and holds it down, because right now, I don't have anything holding this down and I don't want to put a couple bolts here. With this overlapping and this all cinched down, I'm hoping that it holds this tight enough. So I think I'm going to use it first and see how it is. But if not, I'm going to put a little transition piece over that comes over this guy, like your uh, flooring strips a lot of people like to use. Something like that that's tight enough that when you push it in, it's going to hold this matting in. So I don't know. Thanks for watching.